Hello, hello, buenos días, buenas tardes. Estoy muy, muy animada de estar aquí con ustedes y vamos a hablar sobre diferentes maneras en que podemos ayudar a las personas que no hablan nuestro idioma y vamos a hablar sobre diferentes cosas que podemos hacer para nuestras organizaciones. ¿Estás listo? Hi, everyone. We're so excited to get in and to start talking about multicultural communication and outreach. I'm so excited that you're here. My name is Emily Martin, and I am the Communications and Engagement Manager for Clarity PX and Boss Lady Consulting. Today, I always like to start off with something a little bit different, a little fun when it comes to multicultural communication. I've worked in multi-communication and multicultural communication and outreach for the past 15 years. I've worked with businesses in the Fortune 500 space and also in small businesses and uh, nonprofits, education, healthcare, consumer product goods, different areas there, market research. So I'm excited to get on here today and talk with you and share with you a little bit about uh, strategies and tactics that you can take to start implementing into your, into your strategies for this new year and for years to come. So let's dive in and we will get started on our presentation. I wanted to start off by saying that embracing multicultural communication starts with you. This is something that I feel really strongly and passionate about as a marketing leader or a small business owner. This is a wonderful opportunity for you to recognize the importance of multicultural communication, become an advocate for multicultural communication and, and, and inclusivity. And here are some ways um, that we can jump into that. So let's, let's dive in. Okay, so I always like to know what the process is and how we're going to get through all of the, the different content that we're working on and that we're going to be talking about today. So I mapped out kind of the outline for this webinar. So first, we're going to be talking about understanding multicultural communication, the different strategies that are within multicultural communications and outreach. Next, we're going to be going more into detail about um, powerful strategies for successful multicultural outreach campaigns. Then we'll talk more about how you measure the success of multicultural outreach campaigns. We'll dive in a little bit for best practices, and then we'll open up the time for the Q&A. The chat is open. I'm going to make sure that the chat, the chat, the chat is open. <laughs> Here we go. So if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts that you want to discuss here at, during the webinar, please drop them in the chat. Um, you can also, there's a, going to be a link at the end to email me about, to email me about the chat or chat with me about the webinar and we will dive in and I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. And then um, we'll do a summary of the key takeaways. Okay. So let's understanding multicultural communications and outreach. So I always like to, um, I love definitions. I love words. I love the meaning behind words. And I love this, this definition here. Um, we're going to dive in about why it's important and then also the benefits of engaging in multicultural comms and outreach. But this definition here, I love. Um, Kansas State University, they um, have a great reputation of being a very inclusive, diverse um, university space. And I love this quote this definition about culture from their community toolbox. So you can see that culture can be de defined by a lot of different areas. So whether by traditions or beliefs or languages, it can go span different ethnicities, different races, different religion, nationality, and also ways that people express themselves. So when we're talking about multicultural um, communications and multicultural multicultural engagement, what we're really looking for is reaching, um, reach different audiences, not just within someone who speaks Spanish or someone who speaks um, Chinese or French or whatnot. It goes beyond language. Technically, it's defined as verbal or written interaction involving two or more participants who have different um, cultural values and belief systems. Um, it's also about engaging in multicultural communication. It also means that you're understanding and you're appreciating different cultures and communicating with people from different cultures. And I just love that it does. It does go beyond language speaking traditions. Um, okay. So why is, multi why is engaging in multicultural communication important? 
I think I love data. I'm a bit of a data nerd. And I think when we have um, data backed research, um, or research backed insights and initiatives, I think that makes what we are trying to do for our, um, for our communities and for our audiences, we can show the, the relevancy and also the reason behind why we need to engage in different efforts. It's also really helpful to have research backed information, especially if you are a marketing professional and you have a C-suite that you are reporting to or your boss it's always nice to see a lot of the time they want to see data. They want to see, okay, why are we, why are we doing this? Um, and why are we um, putting in all this time and effort and money into this? If it's, if it's really not going to be helping our people. So, um, I really, um, the sense of data from, from the migration policy Institute, you can see over the past 10 years, just how much it's grown. So this shows the immigrant share of us population, the blue line. You can see it's been pretty steady. And then you can see the number of immigrants that we've had. If you look from 1990 to, this is from 2021, the huge influx. And during COVID, as you look into and dive into the research, you can see that there was a huge surge as well with immigration. I have a quote here that I, that I really, um, or more data that I really love here. So look at this close to 20%, so 5% of the world population, that's the United States, um, but close to 20% of all global migrants reside in the United States. That's a big deal. I want you to look at this map too and see if you um, are living in one of these states to see how it's grown um, throughout the past decade and see if, if you are in this area, here's a little key to show the different um, percentage change um, people who are moving into these highly, into these areas. If you live in and reside in these states, you need to be looking at these numbers when you are starting to wanting to die, when you want to start diving into multi-communication, start looking at, at your audience and seeing how it's making an impact. Okay. Another thing I love is it's not necessarily be necessarily about ethnicity or race. You can also talk about multicultural communication. It also spans generational differences. You know, for a long, um, I'm speaking as a millennial here, <laughs> for a long time, businesses and organizations were really trying to narrow in and um, conquer that millennial. How do we, how do we reach out to millennials? And, and now you can see this huge push now for Gen Z. So Gen Z, I love this study that Microsoft did about the psychology of inclusion and effects and the effects in advertising. Um, they found here about um, Gen Z about inclusivity and um, inclusion in, inclusivity and engagement in multicultural communications with brands, what they found here for, for Gen Z. So 76% of Gen Z individuals are more likely to support brands that are that are authentic in their advertising. 70% are more trusting of brands that represent diversity in ads. 69% said that brands that represent diversity are more authentic. 47% um, are more trusting of brands that represent me in ads. There was also another stat that I read that over 50% of, of individuals in Gen Z are, um, come from a multicultural background across gender, um, race, or across ethnicity. Look here. So the lift and purchase intent here, intent. So people are more prone in Gen Z. Gen Zers are more prone to buy um, in, into these ads if they see more women. They're 60, uh, 26 point lift. So that, that um, if they see an, a, an ad with a woman in it, um, their likelihood of supporting that is here. Okay. I love this quote from Think Now. It's a market research firm. They just focused all on market research. And I think it's important um, if you are not engaging and if you're not engaging with multicultural communication, it's a, it's a mess. And if you're not diversifying your communication strategy and reaching out to those people who need the support and help and buy, um, if you're providing services, for example, that you're 
um, your community needs and you're not narrowing in um, your multicultural audiences, that's a huge, a huge miss. Um, especially with um, Gen Z, I love another study that I read is personalization is key when it comes to effective, um, effective multicultural outreach. You think of the world that we live in of, you know, the instant replay, the quick messages that they want, they want it faster. They don't want, they want it. Um, and so that's the exciting thing and also be, um, hard for us marketers, and, um, communication leaders to try to stay on top of the trend and try to follow the follow trends, but then also trying to be authentic. Um, sometimes personally, I roll my eyes at the word authentic. Cause I, I picture Instagram people on Instagram, like taking their fake, their fake Instagram life and seeing, um, that this is their real life on reality that that's not the case. Um, and Gen Z, I love that they're going to sniff you out really fast as an organization. If you're not true being, um, if you're not diversifying, if it's just lip service with, you know, we're a diversification, um, you really need to be showing it. And so I love, um, about smarts, um, they're making it more personal. Um, and, and more of a building a ship. Um, and they're, you're finding that more and more online building community, um, as well. And, um, as well as with, um, community engagement, different things like that. The smarter brands are investing that one-on-one -on -one time and interaction with their different audiences. Okay. So I have, um, I'm going to show you this video really fast and, um, Target has done an incredible job of um, being inclusive in their advertising and their strategy. A few years, they um, came out with a commitment to invest 200 billion, or not 200, 2 billion, $2 billion in supporting black owned businesses. And so I want us to show, I want to show this ad campaign really fast to give you an idea of how Target was is using their initiative of investing two billion dollars to um into supporting black owned businesses within within their advertising so i'm going to hop over here to my video and hopefully it all works right fast meters when you come in for our coffee you don't just leave with better mornings you leave supporting brighter futures and bigger dreams Supporting family business. Girls with curls. And working moms. When you shop black owned. Mexican American owned. Korean and queer owned. You leave with change in your hands. All right, here we go. So I love that video because it's such a great representation of so many different, of so many different cultures, of so many um, belief systems. Um, you're not just, you're not just showing black owned businesses, you're hitting LGBTQIA plus, you're also focusing on Asian business owners, you're focusing on Lat um, Lat um, Latinos, Latinx. It's just um, targeted a really, a really great here um, to, to represent and to follow through with their, with their initiative, representing, um, small or minor owned, um, businesses. There truly is right now a for, um, culture and um, cultural humility and engagement and in communication. Um, as we look at, as we do our research and as we look at different organizations that are doing it well, we can take, um, and learn some good insight. Okay. So five ways of engaging in multicultural communication, how um, it will benefit your life and your organization. Um, I, when I lived in the Caribbean, so I lived in the Caribbean for about 18 months. I was, a, um, I provided service um, down there and helped individuals and families improving their life and their livelihood. And I had taken about two years of two and a half years or so of Spanish in college. I went to this, um, I went to the Caribbean area and all my professors that were at in college, they were either native Spanish speakers from Spain. And for my fellow Spanish speakers, you know how different the accent. Um, 
and even the phrases and different things like different. Um, and then I had from different um, South American countries or Latin American countries had these um, professors. And when I moved to the Caribbean, I lived in the Dominican Republic and I lived in Puerto Rico. And I also lived in St. Thomas in the U.S. Virgin Islands and in Barbados in the West Indies. And if you know anything about Caribbean um, or the history of the Caribbean, you know that it um, um, owned by very different countries um, throughout the world, throughout history. Um, there is a deep, rich culture all throughout the Caribbean uh, differences. For example, when I was in um, languages that were spoken were Spanish and French and English and French Creole and Malay and um, German and Dutch. And so it was just this beautiful um, of so many beautiful cultures and so many beautiful people and tradition and um, ideas. And, but I, when I first um, went to the, the Dominican Republic and, and um, I, my Spanish was not great. <laughs> um, even though I had practice and I knew the grammar and I was, you know, I was fun in it. Um, but when I was there and I was, and I speak the um, primary language, it was very humbling. And I think any type, any time you are, um, starting to engage in multicultural communication. That's why I started it with, it starts with us. It starts with you is to come place where, um, you can come in a place of empath empathy, where you want to, um, you engage with others and you, the way that I always look at it is how I feel like, um, if I was new to a country or if I had been here for a while, but no one around me spoke my language, no one around me grew up the way that I did. We had differences in belief systems and in cultures and how would I want to be treated, right? That, um, I will tell you that people who helped me when I was struggling to learn a new language and I was trying, um, the people who reached out and would help me rather than tease or make fun or just completely ignore me because I didn't believe which. Um, they made a huge impact in my life. And when I there, and um, I'm very clear uh, that I'll help, um, provide and include communication um, to others so that because every individual is important and everyone's experience is important. And it's, and, um, and when you engage in multi um, your life, it builds trust and collaboration that you're valuing um, others in, in, in being inclusive. You're creating lasting partnerships and relationships. You're also reaching wider audiences. And then it's also showing that you are demonstrating adaptability and flexibility. Um, I'm just proud of you for, for being here, for listening to this conversation, um, to taking the step, uh, steps that you need in order to um, actively engage in multicultural communication. So I want to dive a little bit more about um, five powerful strategies for effective multicultural engagement. Um, these are lessons that I have learned throughout um, my career of working in multicultural comms for the past 15 years. And from personal experiences, I've also shared some other experiences in here from colleagues and some studies here to kind of dive in here as well. Okay, so this first strategy, and it's kind of touching on that piece, um, is recognizing the importance of multicultural communication. Um, one thing that um, I learned early in my career um, was the importance of, of making sure that people feel seen and people feel heard. If we want to be successful in marketing um, or in um, customer service or patient experience or, or um, internal communications um, and building better cultures and better brands and experience for everyone involved, um, you've got to be able to see people as people and treat them as um, I thought I would share a little bit about this. So um, my, I remember um, one experience where I was working um, in a development office. I was a fundraiser getting um, a public relations outreach um, um, as uh, manager, um, assistant manager. And so I was working on campaign um, for we, the services that we provide, um, 
therapy services and special education services for children ages three um, that had um, developmental disabilities or delays. And so we had all these fundraising efforts. We were not organization. Um, we had all these fundraising efforts and I was in charge of a couple of different campaigns, different fundraising efforts. So there was one um, that we had rapport with, um, with our local community of doing um, visits to different schools and to um, do fundraisers within the schools to donate um, donate money at the time um, to supporting our to supporting our foundation and the services that we provide for our for our kiddos. And so um, there was one particular thing as we were looking at different ways and we were. Um, we noticed that there was a gap within that program that we didn't have a lot of demand from um, high schoolers in that age group. Um, and so we knew how important it was for um, high school students to community involvement um, in the state where I was living, where um, there are certain requirements have um, to have community hours. And so um, my team and I, we, this, um, advisory board, high school advisory board, um, to get more involvement from a younger generation, cultural gen um, from um, children with disabilities and delays, um, integrating with more school and um, um, normal development um, individuals. So um, with the high school advisory board, we enlisted the help of our high school members and high school members of the community, and they joined this board. We would meet uh, monthly to two times a month where we would get together and we would get their insights, how we could better um, outreach to their age group and have them partner with us of how we could help raise funds for, for the kids that we're going to help. Um, we did this uh, the um, for we started one year, still going, um, but for that one year alone in this particular campaign initiative, we, because of that involvement, because we took the time and we put together a strategy of recognizing it was important to get, um, to reach out to different audiences, able to um, see a 40% increase in donations um, for that particular camp initiative. Um, one thing that I really love about organizing cultural communications um, committees within your organization, within the community, um, is you bring people together um, from different cultures, language speaking traditions, groups, genders. Um, and this is a really great testing ground and we'll test in, um, in the future. But gathering insights, engaging in purposeful conversations, and also testing campaigns for your initiatives so that it's resonating with um, resonate res a particular audience um, and show them, okay, we're coming up with this ad campaign. This is how it looks. This is what we're going to be doing here and to get their feedback that's instrumental. And so recognize the importance of it. That's a great strategy um, to be focused in on when you engage with, um, when you want to engage in multi out multicultural outreach and communications. Strategy number two. So embrace a learning culture and be flexible. So one of the biggest mistakes um, that I continue to turn over again um, is organizations, they assume that they, um, organizational leaders assume they know what everyone needs um, just because they've read the paper or they've read the latest of um, Forbes or um, they sign on a different, um, you know, they've read reports. But when we, um, think that we know everything and we just say, oh, you know, I know what's going on here. I know what this particular audience needs. One, it's really um, prideful and kind of pompous. And the best way, one of the best strategies to engage with other peers is to just embrace a culture of learning and being flexible that you're not going to understand nuance and every, um, and every um, aspect of that culture. That's not your culture. Um, so when I jump into it, I always work when, and when I, others ask me about how they can engage better multi, in multicultural um, communities. And, um, I always think in a way that you've got to self-reflect here and examine your own, what are your preju pre prejudices? What are your biases, biases? Do you have different stereotypes about different, um, and that could be based on experiences. Um, I think with having internal um, 
review thoughts and process um, thoughts and processes. You can see where your weaknesses are. You can see where your strengths are. You can see areas and um, take on that personal ownership and responsibility of like, how can I personally reach out to this person um, from a different culture or who speaks a different language for me? And I'm not saying you need to go out there and be bilingual, learn another language, mend it because um, knowing a different, being able to communicate in their own uh, native tongue is so in such a beautiful experience um, because you're able to see that. Um, so I love this kind of, here's an, kind of a little bit of an example here of how to, as an organization, how to embrace a learning and to be flexible. Um, so first you do that self-check and then second, you can be that advocate for, um, immigrant culture and, um, and inspire your team members and your leaders within your organization of how they need to embrace culture. So um, here's a quick scenario. Let's say you have a very diverse multicultural population in your workplace and community, and you've received feedback that individuals feel discriminated against because of their culture. I know that I have run into that in a career and um, and that can be gut wrenching at times because when you put together all these different campaigns and your initiatives, and especially um, you want to make sure and you're trying to, and yet um, when you receive, it can, can feel a little bit, um, a little bit hard to hear. So one, I have the um, experience of just taking that feedback, owning it, and then figuring out, okay, what are my, you know, do I am I biased in my communication? Am I being prejudiced? Am I stereotypical? And then, um, and then having a discussion with your teams of, okay, how can we improve here? Um, one internal tactic that you could do that I've used in the past is you can partner with your HR director to develop an internal communications campaign to showcase your employees at their different experiences. Um, I've done this a little bit um, in different ways. I've seen others do this in different ways. But being able to really um, showcase the authentically showcase um, the people who are in within your organization for all that they for all that they are, and to have them um, engage in that way, it can people it can help people feel seen, created, loved. Um, that's one um, idea that me in the past. Um, another example is an external tactic that you so um, host a cultural outreach event. Um, within your organization, whether it's at your organization itself by bringing in the community and, and celebrating diversity and learning from each other. So it could be either a lunch and learn service um, or it could be a um, come, um, come the month on this, um, on the first Monday of every month, then we'll get together and we'll hear someone from um, this community experiences or we'll hear um, someone from this community share experiences and not just to do it around Martin Luther King Jr. Day right? A month or um, women's, women's health month. It can be to show the, um, to show your inclusivity. Now there can be, there's nothing wrong with themes um, or different awareness months, but to do it throughout the year, I think shows your engagement and your, and it shows your commitment to multicultural locations by having it more frequently. Um, that's an idea that you can do in order to show and to provide the platform for others to be able to feel seen and heard. Um, I've seen that um, work successfully in a lot of in a lot of different ways. Okay, so strategy three: engage authentically and equitably with diverse communities. So I love this. That Sally Mildren, our um, chief boss lady and chief stress and CEO over with um, Boss Lady Consulting and Clarity BX. She shared this example um, and it kind of, it shows the sites that they've um, captured um, at her organization, the tactics that they use, and then their measurement piece. So you can see I was working in Seattle for um, a Medicaid insurer company. Um, they were able to increase the growth of the specific Asian subculture and Russian clients by understanding what resonated with them um, and so when they changed their brochures and their collateral, their marketing collateral about insurance in a way that was more relevant to them, not just in English, and um, there's certain cultures too that visually, you know, visuals are better received on written cues. Um, 
So in the case of the Eastern European clients, they, they liked it and they, they said that they trusted the icons more, wanted to see the icons more in there. Um, and then their Chinese and Vietnamese clients, they wanted it in their own language. And so um, Sin and her team, they were able to partner um, with local community centers and newspapers. And because of that, because of that, one, they, they sought out research, two, they followed up with that research and then they, and they implemented it. And then you can see that they grew their membership base for those particular clients in that, within that, those audiences by percent. And, um, when Sally shared that with me, I loved it because I've seen that in my life when, um, we've engaged, um, when I, with, when me and my team have engaged properly with, uh, multicultural audiences and saw them and heard them, we were able to just completely change, change the game. People felt more loved. They felt more seen. And because of that vision as an organization grew, um, because we are showing that we are inclusive, that we care about what their needs are. Okay. So strategy number four is invest in cultural research and show sensitivity. Got this from the rooftops. I would, <laughs> um, part of my career I spent in market research. I was a market research consultant and, um, in school and whether you've been formally trained in marketing or in, in sort of public relations or um, digital marketing or, or whatnot, um, you know that the foundation, the foundation of any good marketing strategy is based on solid research. And because without conducting um, primary, secondary research and determining what your audience needs, and especially for multicultural audience, multicultural audiences, um, or strategies, your tactics, um, they're not really going to push the needle at all who you're reaching and what they need. Um, and so my invitation to you is to become a champion for market research station and the great and, um, and speak till you're blue in your face of how important it is to truly know your, what your people, the people that um, you, the, who you serve in your communities and um, the people within your teams, what they need. So I love, I'm going to go a little bit with my market research, um, how excited I get with market research. There are types of market research and, um, and one of the biggest mistakes, and I've done this a little bit before is when we have leaders, um, business leaders or organizations that they want to engage in multicultural communications and outreach, but they assume that they know, they assume that they know, okay, well, I read in the paper that, um, area is, um, that Hispanic. And, um, you know, this is, I read this article here in this one report from five years ago that says that this is how Hispanics engage with, um, with our particular service line that makes me want to pull my hair out, <laughs> um, because it leads again, it shows a lack of humility. It shows that it shows that generalization, whereas before we talked about how important it is to have personalized messages, personalized outreach, personalized, um, experiences with others. Um, so here's an example of primary research efforts, um, quantitative and qualitative quantitative. When I'm talking about, that's more of like your, your, um, you can see, um, data points from surveys and, um, numbers and stat that way. Qualitative is more, um, you get more perceptions and thoughts, and that's where you see more focus groups of getting conversations um, from others and get their insights, not just filling up in a box. Both of these, um, both of these types of research are very vital um, when you are engaging in multicultural and in outreach, um, performing in external audiences, audience surveys. Um, doing one-on-one -on -one interviews or group interviews. Focus groups are really, really powerful and impactful. Um, personal observations, so then talking with others, observing how um, going into a community center, for example, if you're wanting to engage with a particular audience and you know um, from your conversations and partnerships you've made with different leaders throughout your community um, that work with multicultural audiences, you go to a community center where a lot of um, individuals within this particular group hang out you can observe like how different, um, how different um, audiences people engage with one another. Um, this is really the men vital. Um, 
also experiments and field trials. So I did as I was, um, I was doing in market research is I was working with a client for wanting to rebrand and, um, not just rebrand, but rename their organization. They had been in the organ, they had been in the community for a long, they wanted to differentiate themselves, um, from everything else in the community. The name of their, the name of their organization was the name of the, and everyone in the town was named that, um, theirs was just, you know, had a different ending. We all know, and maybe you're a part of an organization that's like that. And they wanted to differentiate the brand. And so they enlisted our, and we went in and, um, from the research that we found and the surveys that we had, the focus groups that we had um, conducted, um, doing social media listening, which I really love. There's some really amazing tools that you can use in order to see different trends on social media and within uh, online to see what people are discussing within um, particular um, demographic. And so free naming, um, we discovered that um, the population it was, it was about 90% of the population was um, Hispanic. And within that, about 40 to 55 or 50% of the residents that lived in this in this city were monolingual, only spoken, they only spoke in Spanish. Um, we also found in our research that a lot of them lived in multicultural or multi-generational um, areas. And so it wasn't, it wasn't a, um, it wasn't uncommon to have a, the grandmother and the child and the grandchild and the great grandchild all living within the same home. And so within that research, we were able to see, we were able to understand better about, okay, um, this is what the, the household looks like here. This is what the majority of households look like in this particular city. And from that, we were able to create um, question sets or a list of questions and get on the streets and, um, and talk to people on the streets and asking them about, about the organization that we and reputation and all of, um, all of that. And then we were able to test we, that would work well within the organization. Um, and we, what we did is we presented the name and I'm talking about, I'm going to grocery stores, um, and I'm in the parking lot and I'm talking with someone in Spanish. And if you don't speak another different language, bring someone with you, who's a translator, bring a translator with you and, but start getting into the community and conversations with others. And, um, even, even if you don't speak the same language there are things that you can, and we know this, um, body language gestures. There are different ways that you can see how um, reacting to what you're giving them. Um, so we tested this name. We tested um, within the Hispanic community um, to see how the association was, if they understood, um, um, if they understood, even did from this name change. Um, and we tested it in English and Spanish. And then what we were able to do is we were able to come back. We were able to come back to the organization. Hey, this is this, um, this is what uh, the audience or your audiences are, um, and to get a good, like, um, a lot of, um, impact you want to do, you want to do multiple, not just one off things. I've always sent one survey, um, you know, send a couple, you know, hundred server with, um, we partner different, um, local, um, we were able to, um, have incentives there. Okay. If you participate in my focus group, you know, you can, enter to win a giveaway, get, you know, come for food, or you get um, $50 off on this service, or you have to figure out what works best for your organization. But when there's an incentive there too, that's always really helpful. Um, but we were able to find that there was a particular name that the organization loved, but it didn't test well. It didn't test well within the community. Now I am sad to say that that organization decided to just go forward with the name that they liked. They didn't look at all of the, they looked at research, but they decided to go with that. And I will say that um, after the rebrand, they spend millions and millions of dollars on that. And people don't know. And they, um, they really struggle with, especially within the Hispanic community, they really struggle of how to pronounce it. And it's for, and so they're, um, there is a reason why research is so vital. If you want to properly engage, um, if you want to properly engage with your audience, your, your multicultural audiences. Um, also, so that's primary research. 
Secondary research, which I think most of us, we engage in that, and that's really good. It's fun to do. So that's where you can look at consumer reports, um, data collected from outside source then or outside your industry or location, um, white papers. There's a lot of different areas that you can gather insights, um, especially if worried about your budget, wanna, but you want to, um, uh, that you can conduct online and um, you can do uh, that secondary research. But my, my um, experience and my um, recommendation is to conduct in both. Do primary research, do secondary research. There are ways, and if you have questions about how to um, do that within a good out, you can send me an email or just um, jo uh, drop a comment in the chat and I'd be more than happy to, to talk to you a little bit more about different ways that you can do that. But research, you wanna know, you wanna know, um, your people need and um, through the data you can find you can find that out okay i think that all lessons are important but this too i love um, practice patience creativity and, and inclusivity i think sometimes we whether it's the pressure of okay we need to reach um we need to this uh goal and um we need to make it by here and we um need to earn more money here and we've got to, you know, show that we're being inclusive and da, 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 da. we're trying all these different things. And I think sometimes we can encouraged um, because of feeling engaging with multicultural communications, we feel um, it can be overwhelming at times. But my suggestion and recommendation is to take it a step at a time. What leading with um, seeking to understand and then also, I love this definition from Better Up um, about the difference between cultural humility and cultural competency. You know, so many times the old school trope of cultural competency are the American businessmen taking etiquette lessons. I think all of us, if you took a marketing 101 class in college, you know, you're taught about the differences in, in Japanese um, business etiquette versus American business, whether you shake hands, whether you, uh, you know, different gestures that you, that you do and how to be... Um, sensitive to foreign investors, for example. And I love what they better up said here. And they said that we need to be careful of, of um, allowing the idea of cultural competence to imply that because that person comes from a background, um, that it's that um, everyone is treated like that. It can easily turn into a stereotype. And so it's kind of like, okay, follow these set of rules so that you don't offend someone. And I love that they mentioned this where, you know, we're um, cultural competency and cultural humility is evolving. And in the 1990s, they started talking a little bit more about humility and more in like in literature, but they um, talk about um, you, um, don't necessarily go in with um, these ideas of stereotypes, but you treat people as individuals. Um, take me for an example. So when I love starting, I love starting this in the beginning with me speaking, with me speaking Spanish. Now, if you were to look at me and if you were to know, okay, I'm a millennial, I'm very white and blonde, um, and I'm from the United States, you can start, you know, because of experience, because of stereotype, because of prejudice, whatever it may be, you may start having a narrative in your mind of my experience. Now, were you surprised when I started speaking Spanish? I think that's one of the biggest things that I get when I start working in um, multicultural comms and outreach is there just is a lot of people are surprised and shocked that I'm doing that because it's a natural human tendency stereotypes and it, fighting against that is um, opportunity lies and being more cultural, uh, culturally humble and leading that um, we don't know we don't know someone's experience because they are they're a certain religion and um, they speak a certain language. Um, so here's just a, a different example. So um, an insight that you have for practicing patience and it might time, it will take, okay. Um, so this is something that you can do. Um, you know, if you notice like multi-generational housing in your area and you offer tax, or you realize that within this certain demographic, um, that they don't understand the US tax system. That's something that you found out in the research. So here's different opportunities, whether you know providing one-on-one -on -one lessons at a local community center with a translator located in that area to teach how to prepare and file taxes, 
or if you know that they're in a multi-generational or um, housing and where they bring, maybe they might bring dialed or whatnot um, about um, to better to serve as a translator, stand the taxes or how to file and pay. Um, maybe that's where you target is that younger generation, creating a social media campaign targeted to them to help them realize how they can partner with their family to save money on taxes or um, different financial learning they can teach for their, um, um, their loved ones. So be creative with it. Have fun with it. Be inclusive. Lead with humility. Lead with empathy. Okay. This is just a rundown of the five powerful strategies that I would implement today in your market strategy. So many times we are wanting to measure the success and that's such an important part of what we do as marketers and as small business owners is we need to see that the money that and the money, the time, the effort, the energy that we're putting into these campaigns and to these initiatives are actually, I like this for, um, of how we can measure, um, multicultural outreach. Of course, like the examples that Sally and I used with our different outreach efforts for the high school advisory board, we saw a 40% increase for inclusive um, language and understanding the different, different needs for the Eastern European population versus the Chinese and Vietnamese population of what they needed. 60% engagement, percent increase for that particular population. Um, this is the also part, important part of research is doing follow-up research. Um, not just the initial insights, but then counting the data after you've done a campaign and following um, to see how your customer satisfaction, your loyalty within that particular um, multicultural audience. The awesome uh, cultural relevance and authenticity, you can find this um, and your engagement is going, whether it's digital or it's online, um, whether you have more um, members from this audience that are coming, receive your services or coming into your organization. Um, and then brand recognition and awareness tools that I talked about earlier. Um, um, looking at like on social media, the different metrics that you have when about certain things that you're running on there, you can look at that. Your email marketing, um, you sent out maybe this campaign about a particular um, outreach event that you did and you can kind of see there, the attendance there. Those are the different met metrics that you can look when you can, in order to measure multicultural outreach and success. I will, as we're finishing up, I am going to go here a little bit about best practices. So I love, um, I love comparison charts because it helps kind of helps break it down in my brain. So good practices versus bad practices um, and engaging in multicultural communication and outreach. Again, you can see it's the antithesis of everything, right? So being open-minded and respectful, lack of cultural understanding. So here can be a good guide for you as you're starting those campaigns, as you're starting the initial planning of those to whether you want to print off this sheet or do a screen grab really fast of it. Um, we can make the slides available to you afterwards if you're interested. Um, but checking yourself and making sure checking yourself, checking your teams to see um, if you are practicing the best practices um, versus the bad practices. So I invite you invite you to do that. Okay, we will open up um, time um, for questions and whatnot. Um, there will be after the webinar, there's also a link. If you have any questions for me, um, you can um, send it over to my emails and then at the end of the webinar that you'll be able to um, uh, submit a question. Key takeaways here, again, um, multicultural communication starts with you and outreach. Recognize the importance of it, embracing a learning culture, engaging authentically, investing in cultural research and practicing patience, being humble and leading with empathy. Those are sure ways that you can better improve your multicultural communication and outreach for yourself, teams, for your organization, and also for your life. Um, if you, with any of your patients and outreach strategy, um, this, um, Make sure that you visit us on our website. We are providing opportunities for brand packages and a brand package right now for brand assessments. Um, that assessment, we can dive into the multicultural communications you need to do, whether it's the market research or the where you need to be playing and um, strategically. Um, have any questions, what I shared today, or um, have any um, insights, 
that you back, I would love to hear from you. Feel free to reach out here. And I just really appreciate you today. Um, thank you so much. Um, hasta luego. Um, muchas gracias. Uh, merci. I hope that you um, become an advocate for multicultural communication in your organization. Thank you.